So it's been almost six months since I made my last Ubuntu Core on Raspberry Pi video, and boy, a lot of things have changed. Ubuntu Core no longer supports the apt package manager. Now this is a big giant deal because most people aren't familiar with other ways of getting software onto their system besides using a traditional package manager. And then another huge change is the way Ubuntu Core is installed. Remember the way we installed it in the last video? Yep, doesn't work that way anymore. There's not even a login screen, let alone a user to log in as. Everything is done now through Ubuntu One. So you have to create an account with Canonical and create an SSH key to even log into your device. But before we go any further in this video, it's worth setting the expectation for what Ubuntu Core is. Ubuntu Core itself is a minimalistic, lightweight version of Ubuntu that is specifically designed for the Internet of Things and to be used on embedded devices, not on servers. If you're looking for a version of Ubuntu to run on your Raspberry Pi as a lightweight server, just use the regular ARM version of Ubuntu. So I'm making this video largely due to the comments left in the previous video, so I'm assuming going forward that you already know how to install the Ubuntu Core image onto an SD card for your Raspberry Pi, so we're just going to skip this step. Once you've loaded the Ubuntu Core image onto your SD card and fired up your Raspberry Pi, you'll get this BIOS screen full of lies. You can safely ignore most of the messages here. The next screen is going to be loading the Ubuntu kernel. This part takes a pretty long time, especially the part where it just goes to black and you have a little cursor at the top left hand side of the screen. When I recorded this, it took about a minute and 30 seconds from when it got to the black screen to this next section where it says press enter to configure. After you press enter here, you'll get to do the initial network configuration for Ubuntu Core and then set up the admin account using your Ubuntu One account. Ubuntu Core should automatically detect all of your network devices, including your wireless device if you have one. Your Ethernet connection should be automatically configured, and you can set up your wireless connection here too. Oh yeah, and avoid hitting the cancel button because it doesn't actually cancel anything, it's more of a back button. So the next step is setting up the admin account using your Ubuntu One account. Now I'm not going to show how to create an Ubuntu One account because I kind of feel like if you either can't figure out how to do that or if you have a problem setting up an account with Canonical to use the device, then Ubuntu Core probably isn't the right distribution for you. So assuming that you have an Ubuntu One account, just go ahead and put your email address in. And for some reason it takes a really long time to retrieve your account credentials. It took over two minutes for this section that says contacting store and it froze at 40% and then it jumped to 100%. Now an interesting thing about it is it doesn't actually ask for your password. That's probably because if you put in somebody else's account information or you key something in wrong, you can't log into your device because you need an SSH key to do it. Once the setup is complete, you'll be shown this final screen which shows that the configuration is complete and the SSH key that you can use to log in. Now remember that you either have to import a key to your Ubuntu One account or create a key to actually log into your device. It doesn't create one for you. And obviously I've blacked out some of the information pertaining to my account here because I don't want my SSH keys and internal IP addresses all over the internet. Now even after all of this, if you're still expecting Ubuntu Core to be used as Ubuntu Server, this part is probably going to be really confusing. You can't log into your device from this screen. The only thing you can do is SSH into this device from another machine. Remember that the target use case for Ubuntu Core is the Internet of Things and embedded devices. A great example of the Internet of Things is home automation. You could use Ubuntu Core as a home automation hub, or you could create something like a security camera with it. You could also set up a group of Raspberry Pis in a cluster for service discovery using console. So now that we're in the device, I'll show you that Ubuntu Core is a little bit different. DPKG exists, but app does not. Even when you try to use apt commands, Ubuntu Core will tell you that app doesn't exist, you gotta use snap. You can see that the apt binary exists, but it doesn't function the same way it does on Ubuntu. Instead, you have to use Snap or Snappy or Snapcraft. The packages themselves are called Snap, and occasionally you hear them called Snappy, but they're all the same thing. I did a video a few months ago explaining what snaps are, and if you're curious about it, then you should watch that video. Going forward, I'm going to assume that you're at least familiar with what a snap is. So like the last video, let's go ahead and install HTOP, and let's see what's happening in the system. So we've got four cores, a little under one gigabyte of RAM, and a whopping three processes running. Remember back on the website when Canonical said that Ubuntu Core was minimalistic and lightweight? Yeah, they weren't kidding. It's about as lightweight as a Docker container. And then when we do which HTOP, you'll see that the binary is actually stored in the snap folder at the root directory. This means that the binary is sandboxed and it doesn't have access to anything else outside that directory. 
So if you're coming to Ubuntu Core from the desktop side of things, you might be a bit bewildered because the Snap Store doesn't have a whole lot of desktop or end user applications in it. That's largely due to the fact that Ubuntu has a giant enterprise and developer user base. At this point, most of the snaps that you'll find in Canonical Snap Store are developer oriented. So you see here that we're installing Nextcloud, and here we're installing SyncThing. And then remember earlier I mentioned that you could set up a cluster of Pies for console. Of course, console's in the Snap Store. And you could even install LexD on your Pi. Though that might be pushing a Raspberry Pi to its limits, I don't think it's really designed for virtualization like that. But I think that just about covers installing Ubuntu Core, getting set up with it, and installing some basic applications using Snaps. Now I hope at this point you can see that Ubuntu Core is not meant for the desktop user. It's targeted at more advanced users like developers, hackers, and tinkerers and things. At this point in time, the Snap Store has something like 700 snaps that you can install on Ubuntu Core, but not all of them are useful. There's a lot of test snaps in there. So that's going to wrap this video up. I hope that you enjoyed it, and if you did enjoy it, feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe to the video, share it with your friends, and of course, thanks for watching.